it is a big occasion for us. Uh, we have uh, we are doing a rebranding after almost uh, 29 years in business. Uh, it's going to be 30th year this year. And uh, in many ways, you, you, you get uh, a name and you get attached to the name. But we realize that we, are, we always need to evolve. We always need to improve upon ourselves. And this was time for us after 30 years to um, have a new brand, have a, ha take our vision to uh, our customers and our uh, clients and our consultants and, and talk about what we can do in the future. Uh, so I'm excited about it, uh, although uh, initially it was bittersweet for me. In US, we started launching our name uh, in May, and I was more emotional at that time of, of losing the name Dices and coming up with uh, Dexian. Uh, this event will conclude our uh, worldwide rollout of Dexian. So I'm actually excited and excited about what the future brings. Um, and I thank you all for uh, joining me here. Thank you. Thanks, Neeraj. Thank you, Maruf, for coming all the way from US, um, taking time, uh, coming here, and uh, uh, be with us for the next couple of days. Uh, in fact, I'll put it this way. Uh, I joined as an employee initially, but became part of the family member, and uh, is also my mentor, because I didn't know anything about staffing industry. Uh, so uh, I can say that like uh, is my mentor, and over a period, uh, what we did in India is uh, typically building a culture of uh, people-centric uh, model uh, that propelled the growth uh, line for India. Um, with 1,500 people here, uh, a lot of families being supported, and we wanted to do more. Um, so they're in the business of good. That's the uh, slogan which we have added, and. Uh, which is what are the players which is better than India to do that one with a global presence in almost all the countries with uh, global uh, capability being built. Um, of course, the uh, uh, main market is the US, all the IT companies. Generally, uh, the US is the main market and the rest of the world uh, revolve around that one. So the uh, Dexian is also similar to that. Started as Dices 2024, rebranded as Dexian India and now building the current uh, level to the next uh, era of growth and development, which we wanted to put it in India. And uh, thank you, Maru, for that one to bring it up in India. Thank you. So it was actually a very thoughtful rebranding. We took uh, over a year uh, to rebrand. We talked to our customers, we talked to our employees, and we talked to our consultants that work with us. Uh, Dices, when we founded it in 1994, June, for first 20 years grew organically. But then we started buying up some companies to build some capabilities beyond our core staffing business. Um, in 2021, we did a uh, similar size company merger. So we merged with, a, actually we acquired really uh, a $450 million company that was in the same field. It was a, one of our competitors. So we basically doubled our size. And then we grew very fast in the 2022 when market was really good. Um, what we realized is the reason for the rebranding was twofold. It was one fold was internal, one fold was external. The internal part was to bring all these uh, people that were part of different companies that went into Dice's umbrella to feel as one company and, and shed their past and look into the future as what we can be. So that was internal, have a Dexian. The external part was that we realized when we talked to our customers that they many times looked at us like an elephant. When you touch an elephant, you think that part of it is what you are. Uh, then, so people that we served in upskilling, reskilling thought we are an upskilling company. People that we did IT staffing, they thought we are a staffing company. People that we did services and solutions thought we were a solutions company. So this give, gave us an opportunity to go to all our client base, because whenever you rebrand and have a new name, they ask you what's going on and say that we are more than just this one area that you know us for, that we can do all this for you and be, truly be your partner uh, in, in your journey. So that's the reason why, why we uh, rebranded as a, as a Dexian. Uh, but it took us almost six to eight months to actually uh, come up with the name come up with the customer surveys to see how they want to see us. 
we are we are so we are in staffing but uh, part of the reason we rebranded is we are more than staffing now we are in a platform so we do staffing we also do solutions we do cloud transformation digital transformation in fact a very big unit is run from india for that we also do upskilling reskilling um, in the it industry as you may know that there is a shortage of labor and the new technologies keep coming in so we have a unit that takes people and trains them into the new businesses so we do all that our major business is staffing which is uh, around uh, it staffing so technology focused individuals joining our clients for their projects but we are as dexian we do a lot more than just staffing so it's more a i in consulting than uh, the traditional in india we call the staffing in terms of uh, the labor staffing it is not the uh, blue collar job it's a high end white collar consulting yes, white collar. basically uh, go to the rebranding what will be the share between staffing and other new so right now staffing is about close to 80% of the business um, the rest of it is about 20% but uh, last year uh, when the industry slowed down staffing part is the one that actually went negative a little bit and others grew double digits so we are trying to shift that mix to more to get to 50-50 it's going to be a process because of the scale of it but right now it's about 80-20 see this recently the more emphasis on staffing man manpower you know so now global investors here yeah. they talk about investment and simultaneously they talk about how many jobs they generate right. so it's a staffing is a good business what is the reason you coming out of you reducing your staffing so uh, so when i when i say reducing i don't mean uh, i don't mean reducing the business i mean reducing the mix that we are going to do other business more which are more value add so i'm not saying that we are going to go from 800 million in staffing to 600 million staffing and that would do it i would say i would do 900 million staffing and 500 million in services and other area and the reason being is that our customers are multinational companies and they have variety of needs that they have in a, in their skill side and we want to be a partner to it most of the time staffing is uh, considered more transactional it's a one year project six month project and they do the project they come out of it um, we want to be a long term partner to the people that we are placing and long term partner to the clients that we are serving so we want to serve them in various areas because they have various needs so that's the plan yes sir sir if you could uh, identify yourself <coughs> this is vankar trinity mirror hello job market in us or india oh, india, india. So India, I think you can talk a little bit yeah. more. Kumar is a country head, uh, so. So uh, the job market, typically, if you really look at it, uh, the last ten uh, years, it's been a tremendous growth which is happening here. Uh, what happened post COVID also, if you really look at it, most of the global captive centers have expanded the business. Um, the IT market is right now about like two hundred and fifty one billion, uh, which is about to even increase further, about like ten to twelve percent. growth annually which is happening right now in, in terms of the global captive centers which are establishing this year the expectation is about like 51 billion to 57 billion um so every every com company which is there a multinational company wanted to expand the market here the, the main reason is here is like at some point of time there is a speed which is required in uh, getting the uh, people to work on it on projects then post covid what happened is like everywhere uh the talent search is happening globally not uh, focused on where the projects are happening so which means obviously there is a uh, work which has been translated into india uh, coming into india because india is the main hub for all this uh, captive uh, centers and the third important factor is we also added the value chain earlier it was more like kind of a traditional app development which was working out but now we added into the value chain including some of the major areas like aml um uh, cloud computing and all those which are uh, taking place so it's in a right now uh, what we look at it india has a interesting uh, dimension of uh, growth uh, not just uh, in the traditional line but in the newer areas which is the most important area where your uh, presence is felt everywhere in the world uh, with the geopolitical thing which are happening all around and here it's much more stable and a um, lot of younger population uh it's it's poised to have much faster growth than what it was uh 10 years back uh, 
Um, so we expect that's one of the reasons we wanted to kind of expand uh, a lot in India and lot of invest a lot in India. So right now we have about like five cities operating in all the major metros, um, six offices in India. Um, in fact, all these offices are in grade A building, uh, A plus building, in fact. And um, we wanted to kind of expand our presence, not only in terms of the uh, work which we do, but also the type of work which we wanted to uh, undertake. Um, so I'm very optimistic, and he's also very optimistic. That's why the investments are uh, making it rebranding plus taking it to the market uh, in India century. So I, I take this question slightly in a different mode. One is the India centric uh, question, and the second is like what we do from the uh, Dexian side. Uh, if you really look at it, obviously, yes, our quantity is more uh, in terms of the quality everywhere. Every company which is feeling the uh, need for a quality people. Unfortunately, like our universities, when they produce uh, the uh, type of people, what happens, the niche 20 to 25 percent of the people have the quality to kind of get absorbed directly into the company. And that's what it is happening right now. And most of the premier institutions have been uh, no, normally been acquired uh, or uh, been placed into some of the niche companies. What happens to the second tier of people? Uh, it's basically because the level of education which, which happens during that, the closure is the biggest problem. It's not that the uh, uh, material which is provided is, is a substandard. The closure of the person from a corporate, the college to the corporate, is where the attitude and uh, building the right values, building the behavioral patterns and things like that becomes a problem. That's where we get our quality <coughs> slightly uh, lower down uh, when it becomes uh, absorbing into the multinational companies. So what we have done is like uh, typically to address this one. In fact, uh, I was part of the NASCAM SME Council, part of this killing uh, group also. Um, so everywhere, uh, there are right schemes which are happening right now. The NASCAM has uh, started uh, uh, the prime education, which is basically for upskilling the people. Um, every state has invested a lot, uh, in fact, to upskill people from the college. Even in Tamil Nadu, it's a non, non model work scheme, which is being, being uh, uh, in place to upskill the people. We also in uh, Dexi, and what we are trying to do is like one of the major initiatives in learning and development. When we recruit a college recruit or trainees uh, from the college, what we do is like first three months, we put them in a, a training pattern, which is basically not to uh, put them into a technical program, but basically to make sure that like in that program, we cover all the values, behaviors, and things like that. So it becomes easier for them technical or the coding wise, we still have or the ability to put the math in place, we still have a very superior people. But the <coughs> translate into actual work becomes that piece is a problem. And that's where a lot of all the corporates need to invest into upskilling and we have the platform for the upskilling. That's where that's what he was telling. So we have a platform for the upskilling, which we are doing it for global corporates. And we are internally also using that platform to kind of build that one. So that that matches basically whatever the supply which comes in becomes a quality supply. Okay, you are different from other employers. You said no, you are a people centric, not customer centric. That is that answers your question. I don't we don't want to compare with any other employers in the market. So we are good, we are good. We are in the business of good. And we can only say that like whether we are good or not good. And if I wanted to compare with somebody whether they are good or not, which is not our way of uh, dealing with things, because once we say we are good. We also look at others also good in the market, right? Uh, but people-centric model is uh, uh, typically look at it this way. We wanted to reward uh, the people, those who are putting their heart and soul in building this one. So uh, take a moment uh, in India. I'm talking about uh, just India right now because uh, globally then uh, we can take it differently. Take a moment. If a person works for a uh, company, it is not just working for a company alone. He is working for the country. Because the brand image of the country and the company is important when they are dealing with the multinationals. And uh, here, what we needed to do is like, uh, it's not a one way uh, transaction where the employer says that I'm good and the employee is not good. So, people centric model is make the employer good and make the employee also feel that ownership so that they become good. And what we do is like our LD program, learning and development program, is so detailed. That's why I said in the first place. Even the first three months, we don't put them in a technical training. We put them in a values and behavior. So it's a day and day out, we put them in the values and behavior and uh, 
uh, right set of uh, things which are required for a person to become a person and then become a, a good programmer or become a good employee so that way people centric model which has a very specific metrics which are out there uh anirudh or hr manages that one uh, go go in uh, day in and day out to kind of make sure that the employees follow those things plus if you really look at it uh, in our employee mix 33% is female um so which is very high and we uh, in fact won uh, our award with economic times as the best organization for women when it is a best organization for women it means it's not just a women even the uh, every employee behaves in a way which makes everybody feel safe to work and collaborate and that's why like we wanted to put first is human centric <coughs> make sure that like everybody believes in what they are doing and be a person in it Okay. Would you like so, to repeat the question for the camera? Yeah, uh, about the attrition rate in your company and the as industry. Okay. So the, uh, the we will we'll just uh, retain at the India level at this point of time. Um, so in a in a typical attrition, uh, if you really look at it, um, there are three three type of companies in the IT world: IT, ITES, and then the internet and e-commerce and other companies. Um, typically, in the IT world. Um, pre covid was uh, slightly different uh, it was it was around like uh, 12 to 13 percent considered to be a normal attrition rate which happens at the senior level the attrition rate is low but at the junior level probably junior and mid level it, it would be around like 18 to uh, 22 percent but post covid or covid post covid it has increased a bit so if you really look at it the market was so hot that by a point of time salary level wage level was increasing and the attrition rate was going high it was somewhere around like uh, uh, the mid level uh, it was somewhere around like 24 to 26% at that point of time definitely the it es segments and the um, internet and the e-commerce segments it has very high than higher than uh, the it it segment of it uh, but typically we are uh, uh, with the it most of the it segment comparable with it segment again now uh, this thing if i really look at it the mid level and the lower level the attrition level over around like 18 to 20% and it is always been there and we we cannot do much about it and we work with that one but at the leadership level those who are associated with me i can only say that one my number two employee is also here and all the way up to my leaders everybody i would put it in a very very uh, small way 2011 is when started everybody uh, as of today is eligible for graduate so to that extent like kind of we have retained people and the leadership level all of them are the same sure right let's be thinking let's thinking yes so you know i am an engineer by profession so i'm always looking at innovation um so black sky thinking is looking into the future looking into technologies that might come that we can help our clients to steer towards that again trying to be a client's uh, partner a lot of our clients are multinational companies that are not in the it field they are using it projects to get something done so we are always looking at what is what is going on so over here we have a small team from iit that does innovation work and they are only working on technologies that are um, emerging you know some some are working on quantum computing which is not even out but there is a thought of it so somebody is working on it um they are working with um ai chat gpt4 and see how we can use it so the black sky thinking is that things that you may not know about but you need to investigate and see whether it can be relevant to the work that's going on with the client and um, we always want to invest a certain portion of our resources into that that level of thinking uh, take on ai because most of the companies <coughs> now think that reduction of stopping and other things yeah so what is your take on ai ai is real ai is real uh, you know there are many other things that were fluff uh, i think part of some of the bots and automation some of those were fluff people people sold more than what it is ai is real i i'm, I'm glad to say that dexian last uh, november we rolled out the largest in the staffing industry uh, an ai tool to uh, help us enable uh, take some notes and and deal with uh, 
with the consultants that work for us. I have a team that is focused on looking at how we can use AI to enable and uh, make our people more efficient. Um, it is something that that is not a question of if, but it's a really when. And I, I believe that 24, 25, we are going to see a lot more adoption of AIs into various parts of the business. We are going to face this challenge. Sorry? With AI? So we are looking at multiple things. Uh, you know, we are in the business of uh, recruiting people. So we are looking at AI to do predictive analysis of the resumes that we receive to understand how they're going to be a better fit. You know, today, a lot of them are keyword matching, but with the AI, you could actually use data that are specific to the clients and specific to more than job description, specific to the project to uh, predict that. We are using AI to transcript conversations that have and gener generate notes out of it that is much better. Um, so we are doing that right now. Um, and as, a, as any new areas come in, uh, we are using AI to generate questions that we use to vet candidates. Uh, based on their answer, AI can help us uh, uh, generate a question that's relevant to it. Um, like I said, I feel that AI is real, and people who will have that first mover will have benefit a lot more than people who are just following. Yeah, one, one addition to it, like in <coughs> fact, uh, in a practical real case scenario at this point of time, um, it's it's more uh, building business uh, with AI uh, for the human good, right? Uh, so we are working with the uh, Phil and Melinda Gates Foundation with the uh, government of Bihar at this point of time, where uh, millions of farmers, uh, we wanted to provide them a better uh, the ability to kind of earn more and also to put the technology in place. Uh, what we have done is like we have created one of the biggest dashboards which is used by the government at this point of time uh, and to kind of uh, know about each and every farmer in the uh, state uh, trying to reach out to them and help them out uh, typically. We used a lot of AI tools into that one and we are building the uh, dashboards for the decision making and uh, helping the government to uh, kind of uh, uplift the life of the small, millions of small and marginal farmers. Uh, it's, it's real, as he said. But it's not only uh, just getting into the, the real world, but also benefiting a lot of people. And that's why it's like kind of it's very important for us to use that one for uh, to at least reach out to those people in that way. Um, what Kamata Bihar is doing is like other state governments also doing. And we have, in fact, we are very proud that like we are part of that one because after all, Kamata the Bihar is one of the rice bowls of India. So we have been uh, so much involved into those kind of projects. 